Hi there, um, I'm Jim Marson. I'm one of the pediatric ICU docs at UC Davis, um, a children's hospital there. And uh, my, my talk is gonna be on the implementation of telemedicine and telehealth technologies in the children's hospital and in the Department of Pediatrics uh, with three goals in mind. Um, that's to increase access to children that don't have otherwise access to pediatric subspecialists, particularly in the rural and underserved communities, um, increasing the quality of care and reducing overall healthcare costs. And no, this is not cold fusion, um, but this is a way that we can leverage technology to actually attain all of these three simultaneously. A little bit about the UC Davis Telehealth uh, Network, uh, started by Dr. Tom Nesbitt, who's here. Um, currently, we have seen more than 35,000 uh, patients for live interactive telemedicine consultations since inception, and we regularly connect to more than 100 sites throughout the state, as well as outside of the state, um, to provide subspecialty care primarily for patients that don't have to travel to UC Davis. Um, I'm going to really focus on pediatrics, not that I don't care about adults. Um, my wife tells me sometimes that I occasionally act like one, um, but we, that's where, as a pediatrician, that's where we've been focusing with all of our implementation of this. We have done more than 5,500 telemedicine consultations in, since inception, and we focus primarily on the outpatient clinics, and everybody's familiar with outpatient telemedicine, um, interpretation of studies, downloading EEGs, echoes, teleradiology, which is now a standard of care, but we're also using these technologies um, to be used by advanced practice providers, as well as in emergency departments, and inpatient wards, um, and in the intensive care unit. So I'll focus a little bit on each of these. First, regarding the use of it in outpatient telemedicine, again, UC Davis has continued to expand its use um, in this arena. We have four telemedicine suites. These are pictures of our older ones. Now we have uh, newer and fancier ones in our new building um, that run. And so a doc can come in in the morning, uh, spend a morning clinic or a full day in clinic um, in front of the monitors here seeing patients throughout Northern California. We have seen that it increases the efficiency of specialists because a lot of the overheads that tend to be more expensive at the centers of excellence are transferred to the remote site. So it's their nurses and their staff that are checking in the patients and our doctors are able just to use uh, the room that way. It simultaneously provides education to the remote providers and uh, I have underneath their project ECHO and I'll talk to you a little bit uh, later on that in the slide, but as you can imagine, when the PCP is involved, their education level on the management of that disease increases. Um, we also find that it can increase the optimization of the tertiary center so that those patients that need to come to the tertiary and quaternary centers are the ones that really uh, come to the center. And if they can be managed remotely, we tend to, uh, that's a more efficient utilization of our resources. So. Another application is it's not just for physicians, but there's advanced practice providers that were really trying to incorporate their use of this technology as well. I have several examples up there. Our audiologists at UC Davis are using it now, and we have taken the one of the highest uh, loss to follow-up rate for infants that fail their newborn hearing screening in the country down to essentially zero with the use of this technology. Um, and Simon here is seeing a baby remotely in uh, Redding, California this way. We've used it for speech language uh, therapy, lactation consultants, other therapists, uh, sexual abuse response team nurses have used this technology. Um, and even our behavioral pediatricians and sociologists are using it for what's called parent-child interaction therapy, or PCIT, where we're training the trainers in the state on how to um, use this PCIT therapy. Um, one of the things that I've been working on for about 10 years is the implementation of telemedicine in remote, rural, and underserved emergency departments. And the idea behind this is that to use video conferencing so that when a sick kid comes into a, a critical access hospital, for example, that we're able to hook up and see the child, see the parent, and see what's all going on with that child. And this has been an ever-growing um, endeavor and very successful from our standpoint, where specialists are able to consult, again, the community and rural hospitals. We're finding a lot of data. The uh, next slide, I'll show you some data on reducing overall health care costs, reducing transfer rates, and it's really just become a win-win uh, and financially sustainable model where now we're up to 24, um, 25 emergency departments in Northern California. 
So this is like a typical doctor reaction. Sorry about the four um, data points on this one slide, but you know, people say, oh, you can only have 10 slides, and your doctor's like, oh, you can't tell a doctor what to do, so I jammed a bunch of data on, <clears throat> on the slide here. And then we blame the administrators. It's their fault that you can't see this. Uh, but up in the upper left is parent satisfaction, and we compare um, the parent satisfaction when there, there's a consultation involving video conferencing versus a telephone. Similarly, sick kids, and across the board, statistically significant, the parents like the use of this technology, feel that they're getting higher uh, quality of care. In the upper right is provider satisfaction. We asked the remote ED physicians how frequently did the consultation in telemedicine, which is yellow, versus to uh, tell a phone, which is in red, change in your diagnosis, change in your intervention, change in your disposition, and overall across the board they were happier with the use of video conferencing. Uh, these two data are going to be published in uh, Critical Care Medicine. Uh, soon, coming out in uh, June. Um, in the lower left is medication errors. We also have an impact on patient safety of these children uh, seen by tele uh, video conferencing. And the purple is the when, when they get no consultation, telephone is in red and telemedicine um, is in yellow. As you can see, it's a stepwise reduction in medication errors among the similarly sick cohort of children seen in emergency department. And then we also applied a rigorous uh, implicit review instrument um, on, to measure quality of care. And again, we see this stepwise increase in quality of care with, when these technologies are used. And we're now currently working with healthcare economists on the UC Davis campus to demonstrate that this is also indeed, as you can imagine, a, a big cost savings because we end up reducing the number of transfers to our tertiary center, help them care for the kids in the local community, 30% uh, reduction in utilization of helicopters and things like that. So it's a, a really win-win for all. The other thing that we're using the um, technology for is something called Project Echo or Extension of community, for Community Healthcare. This is originally started at the University of New Mexico with patients with hepatitis C. But to use this technology not only just to uh, deliver direct patient care for patients, but to deliver it to a, um, a group of PCPs, a provider, so that they're able to educate them on how to better take care of the patients with hepatitis C or whatever their, in, uh, whatever their uh, specialty, specialty is. And so we've been doing this at UC Davis with PCIT therapy, we've started with chronic pain management, and it's a new model of care that's going to result in an increased capacity, right? So you help community providers, nurse practitioner physicians, raise a level of care that they're able to provide for their local um, for their local patients, and again, this is a very financially sustainable model. This is the last slide here, um, and we are waiting. As we go from a healthcare system which reimburses us for the treatment of disease um, to providing uh, health care to patients, the use of home, health, home telehealth technologies is really going to expand. And no matter what disease or disease management you're thinking of, whether it's patients with heart disease, diabetes, asthma, hypertension, there's been many, many studies uh, done to demonstrate that these, the use of relatively inexpensive home health technologies can reduce admissions and improve the level of health care that these, uh, these patients are at. And as you know, the VA is very cognizant of this, as is Kaiser, because they use a lot of these home health technologies. Um, and so overall, our objective, our team, is to use these uh, telehealth technologies, again, to increase access for pediatric patients, um, improve the overall quality, and we can simultaneously reduce the overall uh, health care costs. And I really wanted to quickly uh, acknowledge and thank very much my mentors and supporters for this work, both on the health system side with Ann Madam Rice, Carol Robinson, and on the School of Medicine side with Dean Claire Pomeroy and uh, Tom Nesbitt for their support with this. Thank you. Thank you.